Hello everyone, Matt here, and today I'm going to be showing you a guide on how to complete the Python Castle Solo Instance Dungeon. This dungeon requires a minimum level of 118 to start, and can only be entered by one player. The dungeon can be entered one time a day for free, and then an additional three times per day if you have camouflages. This dungeon is a great way to level at lower levels and has usable drops for all levels. I'm not going to go over the drops in this guide because they change fairly often. So, without further ado, let's get started. This dungeon is located in the Doomed Maze map, which also requires level 118 to access. The dungeon is located directly east of the teleporter. This area does have player killers hanging out sometimes, so make sure to be careful. However, you can always just hop to another server if it becomes an issue. From Ardeca, you will want to take the teleporter to the Doomed Maze map. From there, you will run directly east until you hit the dungeon entrance. The entrance can be recognized as a large statue. To start the dungeon for the first time, select the first assignment option and then you can select to enter the dungeon. Once inside, if you are a lower level, you will want to talk with Renza. This NPC will give you a buff that will allow you to resurrect once in the dungeon if you die. After that, you can continue forward. There will be two guards that you need to kill. Once you have killed these guards, the wall will break open and you will walk into a large open area. From here you will have a choice among three different paths. The underground prison entrance, the escort lounge entrance, and the antechamber entrance. The underground prison entrance is located directly in front of you. I recommend this route if you are less than level 150 or if you are trying to get rune triggers. The escort lounge entrance is located to the stairs up the right and then directly to your right. I don't recommend this path and I'm not going to be covering it in this guide. The antechamber entrance is located up the stairs and towards the center. This route is the fastest and only for those who are just interested in drops. I recommend being at least a level 150 before trying this route. The boss will be much stronger and have more HP. So, if you are taking the underground prison entrance, you will be going straight forward. Once through the door, you will simply continue moving forward, fighting the monsters as you go. In this area, you will go through three paths that all look alike. However, as you move forward, each new path will continue to have more and more monsters. Personally, when I do this dungeon, I like to aggro all the monsters on the first path, I like to aggro the monsters in two groups on the second path, and then I like to aggro the monsters in three groups on the third path. However, if you find that you are taking too much damage, you can just aggro less monsters at a time. Just do whatever works for you. When doing dungeons in this game, you just need to find out what works for you and what works for your class, just to make it more comfortable for yourself. Next, you will come to a path that looks different from the previous three paths. On this path, you will find prison doors along the sides. I recommend breaking each of these doors. Each door you break will spawn one monster. Once you have broken all the doors, you should then kill all the monsters. Now. You have probably picked up some prison keys while running through the dungeon. These will, not appear, these will not appear in your inventory, you will simply get a message in your chat box. If you want, you can use them to free some of the prisoners in the cells. However, this doesn't give much XP and I don't personally do it. Now it's time to face the first boss. This boss can hit hard, so watch your HP. He doesn't really have any special mechanics, so just keep attacking. However, it's important to note that he is susceptible to knockbacks and stuns, and you can utilize those to help prevent some of the damage that you take. Once the boss is dead, talk to the blue light, and you will be transported in front of the anti-chamber entrance. It's now time to fight the final boss, Duex Marvel. Once again, it's important to watch your HP when fighting this boss. For the most part, you will just be attacking the boss head-on. However, if you find that you are taking too much damage, you can try to avoid his AoE attack. This is the attack that creates a pillar of light. It will hit you multiple times, but it can be avoided if you just walk out of it. Once the boss is dead, collect your loot and head out of the dungeon. If you are going to be taking the anti-chamber route, you will simply run up the stairs and straight to Duex Marvel. This route is for those who are only interested in getting drops from the boss. Keep in mind that if you take this route, the boss will be much stronger and have more HP. If you are a higher level though, this really won't be a problem. Thank you for watching my guide. I hope you found it helpful. 
If you have any questions, suggestions, or comments, leave them below. And until next time, take care.